I have just powered the computer on, and before we enter the BIOS, I need to point something out. This is what is generally called a BIOS information screen. The information goes by very quickly, so I've pressed the pause break key on the keyboard to pause it. Pressing any other key will unpause it. This motherboard's BIOS information screen is a little less useful than most. It only shows the speed the memory is running at. Most BIOS information screens will also show the amount of memory, along with the CPU model and the actual frequency it's running at. All very useful information when you're overclocking. Just about all motherboard makers cover this information screen up with a logo screen. There is a key to press, typically tab, to hide the logo screen and show this information screen. But you have to hit tab every time you want to take a look. And a lot of the time, the information you need is gone before the tab command takes effect. The first thing we're going to do in the BIOS is make sure the logo screen is turned off. I'll press any key to continue, and on this computer, I need to press delete to enter the BIOS setup. On some computers, it's the F2 key to enter the BIOS. This is the BIOS main menu. It has several menu choices laid out on one common page that take you to different sections of the BIOS. Here's another common main menu layout with its menu choices at the top of the screen. Just about every motherboard maker uses one of these two layouts. These videos are concentrating on overclocking, so we're not going to get into most of these options. The Home PC Builder videos have a video that covers the BIOS in general, and it's lesson one of the computer setup lessons. The logo screen setting in this BIOS is under Advanced BIOS Features, called Full Screen Logo Show, and it is disabled so it won't come up. On other BIOSes, it can be found under Boot and Boot Settings Configuration. The default is enabled. You can select it and disable it. I'll hit the Escape key on the keyboard to get back to the main menu. In this BIOS, all of the overclocking related settings are in the Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker, or MIT. Most BIOSes have a section like this. ASUS calls theirs the AI Tweaker, and MSI calls theirs Cell. If your motherboard doesn't have a section like this, or you can't find the options you see here in your BIOS, then you won't be able to overclock the CPU. This is fairly rare these days, but just to be on the safe side, before you buy a motherboard, go to the Motherboard Maker's website, download the motherboard's manual, and look for these settings. Next, we're going to find and disable the power saving features Quiet and Cool and C1E support so we have full control over the speed of the CPU. I'll hit Escape. And in this BIOS, the power saving features are under Advanced BIOS Features. And here C1E support is enabled. I can either press Enter and change it to Disabled, or I can use the Page Up and Down keys on the keyboard to switch the option. Quiet and Cool is set to Auto, which the default is on, and again I can either press Enter to disable it, or use the Page Up and Down keys to toggle. We need to make sure the CPU fan and system fan are always running at 100% speed. I'll hit Escape to go back to the main screen. And in this BIOS, and in most other BIOSes, the fan speed settings are under PC Health Status. If we scroll down, we find CPU Smart Fan Control. I'll use Page Down to disable it. If I go down a little bit further, I have System Smart Fan Control, and I'll disable it as well. I'll hit Escape to go back to the main menu. Let's go take a look at the overclocking related settings. I'm just going to cover the settings we will be changing. The others are fine at their defaults. The CPU clock ratio is the CPU multiplier. The CPU north bridge frequency is the multiplier used to control the CPU cache and memory controller. CPU host clock control is the reference clock speed. The HT link frequency controls the speed the hypertransport bus runs at. Set memory clock allows us to change the memory multiplier. DRAM configuration gives us the ability to change the memory settings. That is how long the memory waits between operations or its CAS settings you'll remember from the memory component lesson in the Home PC Builder videos. We can also set the reference clock speed and the memory multiplier here. These settings are mirrors of the ones on the main MIT screen. We'll hit escape to go back to the main MIT screen. Next on the list is system voltage control, which lets us change the voltage for some key components. The ones we're interested in are DRAM voltage control, which controls the amount of voltage going to the memory, CPU NB voltage, 
which controls the voltage going to the CPU cache and on-chip memory controller, and the CPU voltage control, which controls the voltage going to the CPU cores. Right now, all of the options are set to auto, meaning the motherboard has control of all the frequencies, multipliers, and voltages. We want to take that control from the motherboard and set all of the options manually, so we know what frequencies, multipliers, and voltages are being used for each component. With the settings at auto, the motherboard is getting the speed and voltage settings from the CPU and RAM. If we highlight CPU clock ratio and hit enter, we get a list of multipliers to choose from. I'll hit escape. You'll remember that the CPU speed, which here is 3200 MHz, or 3.2 GHz, is derived from the reference clock times a multiplier. If we work backwards and divide 3200 by 200, we get 16. So the multiplier being used is 16. We can go in and manually set the multiplier. And the CPU speed is still 3200 MHz. We can do the same for the CPU north bridge frequency. 2000 divided by 200 is 10. We'll set the reference clock to 200 manually as well. The HT link frequency is 2000 MHz. And again, 2000 divided by the reference clock gives us a multiplier of 10. The memory clock is automatically set to 1333 MHz, but our RAM is actually capable of running at 1600 MHz. It's getting the 3233 MHz speed from the multiplier of 6.66 times the reference clock of 200. This is fairly common for the BIOS to set the RAM speed to the next lowest available speed just to make sure the system will boot up. I'll change it to manual and increase the multiplier to 8x. 8 times the reference clock, which is 200 megahertz, gives us 1600 megahertz. I'll go into the DRAM configuration and set the CAS timings manually as well. Change the DDR3 timing items to manual, and I know by looking at my RAM specs that the timings should be 9, 9, 9, and 24. You will need to look at the specs for your RAM to find its CAS timing settings. If you have 1333 MHz RAM, set the multiplier accordingly. We'll leave the rest of the settings alone and hit escape to go back to the main MIT screen. For the system voltage control, I'm going to change it to manual. This sets all of the options below to normal, which means default. I'm getting a flashing message above that the system voltage is not optimized. What this means is that the motherboard does not have control to change the voltages automatically. This is where we need them so we can begin overclocking. Before we do that, it's a good idea to save these settings. We could press F10 to save an exit, but it's best to save these permanently. So after we make changes to the settings and want to get back to the way they are now, we can quickly load them. Most BIOSes have a configuration saving feature. I'll hit Escape, and down at the bottom right, I see I can hit F11 to save CMOS to BIOS. I'll hit F11, and there are eight profiles we can save to. I'll call this one Default. Now if I hit Escape to go back, and go into the MIT, and change the CPU multiplier to 15, hit Escape, and press F12, and load the default profile, hit escape, and go back into the MIT, the setting is restored to 16x. This will be very useful as we do various tests while overclocking. Once we have an overclocking result we like, we can save it and always have it to come back to. Next, in lesson 4, we will get started overclocking by finding our motherboard's maximum stable reference clock speed.